Today I'm in beautiful Frankfurt at the Institutional Money Conference, um, which is actually the main or leading conference for institutional investors in Germany. And I'm very glad to be able to speak uh, today about energy. It's a very short intro into yeah, the unpopular truth about electricity and the future of energy in Germany. When you see a solar field like this, in this case in the UAE, you think, wow, this is the energy transition, the energy vendor in its full success. That's the future. There's no smoke coming out, blue, blue skies and long, large fields of solar panels. And you see 21 square kilometers, 1.35 cent per kilowatt hour, very cheap energy, electricity in this case, um, and a reduction of 2.4 million tons of CO2. That's the future. Let's take a step back. Humanity's needs are actually probably four main items if you think about it. One is food and water to feed ourselves. Second, probably is energy. The energy to keep ourselves warm and to have some industrial activity. It's a very important point if you think about today's development or general the human development. And the fourth one is probably health. Well, I say mental health because if we were all mentally healthy, there would probably be no wars in the, in the world. Um, but the health aspect is very important. This has to do with longevity, with uh, how healthy we are living long, not just living long. And the fourth one is probably the pollution or the waste elements of our existence. And, and that, of course, the environmental aspect has become very important, and rightly so, in order to keep our world cleaner and better from where it was or where it used to be. If you think about it, all of these are actually about energy. Food and water is nothing but energy. We literally have no water scarcity. The, the, the world is full of blue water. We just need energy to get it to ourselves, to desalinate and to get it to ourselves. Same with, with, uh, with food. It just takes energy to harvest it and, and to actually make it available to ourselves. Health, especially mental health, is all about energy. It's, a, it's the energy aspect of our brain and how we interact with each other, how we communicate. And of course, the health, health the aspect of health in terms of medicine, uh, it's a lot about energy. But of course, also human ingenuity. I realize that. <laughs> the fourth point, the pollution, human pollution, the waste is actually all about energy because it just takes energy to collect the waste and then to process it into something less harmful. It's just energy. And that is why when people say energy is just a small portion of the economy, it's just a part of the economy. Actually, it's not. Energy is the economy because without energy, there is no economy and there's actually no human. If everything would be so clear and nice, then why is it so difficult to earn honest money with wind and solar? And when I say honest, I mean honest in the sense of without subsidies, without government intervention, without, without rules and regulations that you have to do this and you have to do that. Why is it so difficult for investors or even companies to make honest money, not money that, that your customer gets from someone else or takes from a taxpayer? I'm trying to make some of those comments or statements today about those reasons why it is so difficult. And the first one is probably about energy density. The reason why it is so difficult to earn honest money has number one to do with energy density. When you see these beautiful fields of solar panels, you know the reason why they're so large is because the energy available per square meter to our surface is limited. That's energy density. By the way, the same applies to, uh, to uh, wind parks. Now, as you, as you take the energy from the wind, you reduce the wind speed and the way that nature uh, uh, rest, restores the wind speed from other layers of the atmosphere, that is also limited by about 1.5 megawatt per square kilometer. Um, if you go beyond that, you actually reduce the efficiency of your windmills. And that is why when you now look at um, the solar, solar park, it's 4 million panels, 21 square kilometers in order to have 2 gigawatt of installed capacity. That's not electricity like generated, that's just installed capacity, which only works when the sun shines, of course. And the 1.35 cent per kilowatt hour, that's not the actual cost. We talk about cost in a little bit. That is what the company building those things charges for the electricity they generate and they put into the system. And we'll talk about what kind of electricity they put in. But you see um, 2.4 million tons of CO2 uh, saved per, uh, per year is actually also wrong because there's many things that are not considered here. Let me try to explain. 
The energy and raw material issue for wind and solar is a very big one. Because of this low energy density, you actually need a lot of energy first to process, mine, transport the raw materials required to have these large fields operate. Actually, the amount of materials you need is much, much larger than compared to an existing you know, coal, gas, or nuclear power station. So you need so much more, and that requires energy first and raw materials first. So before you can have these blue skies with a solar panel, you need to be in China, 22,000 degrees, 1,500 degrees in a silicon smelter and smelt the silicon out of high quality quartz stone, coal energy, um, and uh, a few other things that you require. And here I took a picture from, from Mr. Trushak who went to China and saw some of those silicon smelters. This is a silicon ingot coming out of a 1,500 degree warm bucket. You see this pure 99.9999% six nines purity silicon. It's a process and several steps has to be done. Then you have this ingot, you cool it down, then you cut it into these slices and then you make the little chips, computer chips, or in this case silicon, solar, solar silicon chips out of it. So there's a lot of waste, there's a lot of energy required. And this is the energy raw material issue is one of the main reasons why it is so difficult to make honest money with uh, solar and wind power. The next point, we talked about energy density, we talked about raw materials and energy, energy requirement to first have those installed capacity. Now we talk about intermittency issue. Everybody is aware that the sun doesn't shine, the wind doesn't always blow. So I say here, replace one dirty system, so-called dirty system, with four or five clean systems, question mark? Yes. Because first you're putting up solar or wind, you're actually overbuilding two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten times overbuilding to try to replace one existing power plant. And you have these hundreds, not hundreds of square kilometers uh, of <coughs> nature that you build up doing that. That's one system, actually a multiple of one system. Then second, you need short duration energy storage. Um, in order to overcome the, the intermittency on a short period, hour by hour, minute by minute basis, you need some short duration energy storage. It's mostly batteries, not only batteries, also pumped hydro, but mostly, mostly batteries. But batteries will only give you a couple of hours, maybe half a day if you're lucky. That's why you, need actually, you actually need a third system that's long duration energy storage. And here's mostly hydrogen. And of course, if you're lucky, if you have enough um, um, hydro storage, you might be able to use hydro storage for a certain percentage. But the fact is you have a third long duration energy storage to consider. Fourth, you usually, at least currently planned, always most likely have a gas power plant on standby, somewhere available. I'm here in Germany, in Bavaria, we have gas-fired power stations that are idle for 364 days of the year. And, and just sitting there and waiting for that one or two days where it's really tight on, on, on electricity in the system, where it's dark and no sun and no wind, and then they turn on. Of course, the cost goes through the roof. And the fifth system is of course the integration, the network integration, the transmission, the grids, the so-called smart systems. So all of these five systems need to be built to replace one existing dirty, so-called dirty coal, gas, or nuclear system. Uh, and we're trying to do that with wind and solar. Does this make sense? Is this really the future? When you think about it, because of the issues we discussed above, there is of course a huge amount of environmental um, impact that those systems have. And that environmental impact is also impacted by the short lifetime of wind and solar, much shorter lifetime. Modern solar uh, grid scale, utility scale solar panels from China last 10, 12, maybe 13, 14 years if you're lucky. They don't last 25 years. Some of your home solar panels maybe last 25 years, but not the current newest one. They're very thin, they're very optimized. They're trying to, to make it more efficient, higher efficient. High efficiency always means you actually go more to the edge and not as sturdy um, as the first older solar panels. Less glass, right? less aluminum used and everything. And uh, the same is, by the way, true for, for wind. Um, um, wind uh, windmills on the sea last 10, 12 years. Probably the, some of the ro rotors need to be replaced after eight years already. And even modern windmills on land don't last that long. I used to run a wind park myself in Germany for three years. I have some input, not all input, but some information about how wind, uh, wind parks in Germany run and about the efficiency, how long they last, and all those things. The sad thing is that we're taking a lot of these raw materials from Africa. We're shipping them to China with a lot of energy. We're processing them there. We're shipping them back to Europe. Then after a few years, we dispose all of it back into, China, in, into Africa. That's the modern circular economy. That's the unfortunate, unpopular truth. The question is what now? What's the impact or what's, what's, what's the result of all of this? Well, there's one result on the economy. 
because of those five systems we're building, the costs go through the roofs. So even though a solar panel might be very cheap or a wind, a windmill might be very cheap, the system of providing secure and reliable energy is very expensive. And that is why wind and solar will always, always be at grid scale, more expensive than coal, gas, or even nuclear because the total system is so expensive. And that has an impact on the economy. You can see here some, some snippets from the world. The stock is of the wind, wind industry in Germany. Um, um, solar manufacturers are leaving Germany. Uh, in Germany, the heavy industry, the energy intensive industry, is worse off today than it was during COVID. That's how bad it is. And that's because of the energy situation of Germany. Of course, the, the Ukraine-Russian war had a large uh, impact on this, but not the only one. You see in, 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 in Vietnam, rooftop solar investors are leaving because the government stops, stops um, subsidizing or Siemens issues. But there's so many examples worldwide how companies in the so-called green industry are making less money and the returns, of course, for the investors are plummeting. Another impact is energy poverty. Because of the energy required to build all this infrastructure, the input energy is so high. That's what the energy of return of investment, the EROI, is actually very low. That means you're starving yourselves and your economy off energy. Of course, at the margin, especially at peak power. And in Europe, that might just mean turn off the, the power for a few hours. And if you're lucky, you still have a house. But think back if you're in Kinshasa or in, uh, in Bangladesh and Dhaka or in, uh, in, in Karachi in Pakistan. Think of tens, 20, 30 million people living in cities. Do you really believe a city like this can be powered with wind and solar? Do you really think that's really realistic and possible? In Germany alone, in the past two years, energy poverty increased from 15 to 25 percent. Every fourth household, as per the official um, German um, institution that runs the, the grids, every fourth household is what we call starved of energy or in energy poverty. They have trouble affording energy. So the unpopular truth about the transition is that it is actually difficult, if not impossible, to earn honest money with wind and solar because of those three main reasons, energy density, energy and raw material input, and the intermittency, which requires a huge double, triple, quadruple, even fivefold increase of a system. And that coupled with the short lifetime of wind and solar has an impact, causes energy poverty, has environmental and uh, uh, environmental impacts, of course, and there's issues with disposing of this large infrastructure after 10, 15, 20 years. And of course, the high costs to the economy and in the end to the people. So if you think, if you go back, when you look at um, old power stations in China or in Germany, you see these dark areas, you know, there's smoke everywhere. That's not how the world is today. Modern power plants look like this. There's blue sky, there's water vapor coming out of, out of the, the smokestacks, and, uh, and there's tree growing next to us. So we have to invest in a future that is reliable, affordable, and clean. And of course, we have to, number one, invest in R&D to sustainably wean off fossil fuels, invest in fusion, fission, invest in geothermal activity, invest in other ways to harvest clean energy from the world. But probably more importantly, until we have a solution, we need to invest in our existing energy systems to increase what I call the environmental and economic efficiency. When you look at modern power plants, you can eat from the floor. That's how clean they are. And that is what China and India are doing. They are investing in clean, modern, efficient power plants, coal, gas, nuclear, whatever they have, they invest in. But the West chooses not to do that. The West chooses to go wind and solar. And now you understand why that is actually a mistake. Not because of political alliances or because of, you know, what color your skin is. That is just pure physics and economics. So I invite you to have a look at our book, The Unpopular Truth, Electricity and the Future of Energy. It's available in English, German, and various other languages. Um, there is a blog that we run on our website, theunpopulartruth.com. You can follow me on LinkedIn and, of course, on various social medias. I look forward to be in touch with you, and I hope that this was helpful for your understanding about how energy works and how it doesn't work.